one. This is Donna's happy hour. Just a reminder to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so that you get future notifications of the videos. And please leave a comment. Thank you, have a great day. Welcome to Donna's happy hour. I am here at Blue Arrow Farm, and I have the great pleasure of introducing you to, for the first time on my show, Nick Papillardo. Nick is a young musician that I saw here at Blue Arrow, and I said, I have to get that young man on my show. Uh, he does a lot of jazz, and uh, today he will be doing an acoustic um, some of his original music, but then some improvs as well. Um, so I want you to remember his name because I'm hoping I'll see a lot more of him on my show. <laughs> so grab your drinks, whatever they may be, because I'm hoping you'll spend the next hour with me. Good afternoon, good morning, I should say, or afternoon. I'm not really sure what we're on here. Um, we have a warm fire and some heaters to be able to do our show here because as you know, uh, due to COVID, we have to stay six feet apart and um, trying to, to follow all the rules, um, which I understand, you know. Uh, so Nick, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, you're welcome. So as I said, I saw Nick one night here and uh, we got to talk a little bit, not very much, honestly, um, due to all the music that was playing that night. It was Busy kind night. of hard to hear, but we did manage to exchange numbers. So, um, as I said, we were here at Blue Arrow, and it was a jazz night, if I'm not mistaken, right? It was like a mix of like jazz and blues. I know a lot of people uh, were doing blues, mm, and some okay. people kind of right. Mixing. It was kind of it was yeah. kind of a free for all, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I think it was supposed to start out a blues, blues jam, and yeah. jam, and but that was okay because it was actually very interesting, you know. Um, but that's how I met Nick. He was here, and. Um, I really haven't, we've kind of communicated, but um, so whatever I get from him today is the first time really hearing it. Um, but I did pick up that you are a session musician? Yeah, so um, I ended up studying music in college and okay. uh, I went for music industry and that was performance, production, and also the business aspects oh, kind of okay. crammed into one and uh, it was a great experience. So I learned how to play many different styles of, of music. Music. And uh, part of uh, the deal was, you know, when you, go, when you go to music school, you meet a lot of other, other musicians and right. people who have different styles of their own. And uh, everybody's always asking you to play on the records. And <laughs> so it was kind of, um, it was definitely a learning experience then to uh, um, kind of take influence from everybody but, uh, and uh, put, m make it into your own and mix it, it up. So right. I, once when I uh, started doing that, uh, yeah. the, the word travels, people say, hey, I would love to have a guitarist on right. this song. Hey, uh, who, who can I go to? And Sure enough, you, the more and more yeah. stuff that you do, your name travels. The name tra and, right, right. And that's kind of how I started how uh, doing everything. Yeah. Wow. Well, I have to tell you, the night that I saw him, he was playing an electric guitar. And I was truly impressed, I have to say. Um, you know, I grew up with rock and roll, you know, so... But one of the things that I always did is I, I always found myself very, um, I'd get very engrossed in watching the guitarist go up and, you know, up and down, you know, the guitar. That didn't hit me, did it? <laughs> it sounded like it did, sorry. <laughs> um, as my hair goes up in flames. Uh, but I always found it very, very interesting. And, and he was so comfortable behind that guitar. You really were. You could tell that you were totally enjoying the moment and, and enjoying, uh, because I think at that point, you 
was it an improv that you guys were doing at that point that so, night? So if I if I remember it correctly, um, we did we did a couple tunes. I believe uh, one of them was "Sunny" by Bobby Ebb, and okay. uh, that was that was a cover. So we All played right. um, the main melody that uh, uh, that that he sang on, on okay. the tune, and I played that the melody the vocal line on the guitar, and okay. then I ended up playing that twice, and then. Once when the main melody is, is played, a lot of times in jazz or, or blues, they'll, the guitarist or whoever the, the solo uh, instrumentalist is, um, they'll do an, an improvisation okay. around that melody. And okay. that's kind of where you start conveying ideas to other musicians, and it almost becomes interactive, uh -huh. and uh, it becomes... Uh, a very interesting experience because you there's a lot of things that happen in the moment that you maybe was, don't prepare for you know right i was going to say that's probably really very satisfying because things do come out of it that aren't so structured right which is really nice you Ex know so exactly. you can veer off yeah now i did want to ask you because um i was trying to reach nick one day and wound up reaching his father. <laughs> and uh, that was very interesting. Um, and your father has obviously a good sense of humor. And uh, he, uh, but he too is a musician. Yeah. And he's a drummer. Yeah, he's a, right. he's a drummer. Okay. He's been playing for um, qu quite some time. And okay. I know he started uh, when, he, when he was really young. And okay. he just kind of listened to records and try to play the drums from the record. Okay. So it almost right. becomes uh, an educational experience in itself. In and of learning itself. For, um, like, hey, how did the guys do, do Right. It? It, it, it is um, very interesting to me to find out how a lot of musicians learned. Um, many of them are self-taught that they, you know, would sit down on the drums and try to learn how to play a song that they really like. Right. And that was your dad, okay. Yeah. Now, did he ever um, go into playing guitar or, or just stuck with? I think he, um, I believe he tried taking up guitar lessons um, okay. and that was when he started drums, okay. actually, at, when he was younger. And uh, I think he felt more natural, natural on, the, on the drums. Natural on the drums. So he kind of stuck there. It's, you know, it's really interesting to hear that because um, so many times you hear, uh, who was it that was telling me? I think it was Chris actually. Um, he was saying that once he put that guitar in his hands, he knew that was it. That yeah. was that was the instrument for him, you yeah. know. And your dad, obviously, with the drums. Now, did your dad ever? Is he a session uh, musician or? So, so he played with a band called the Cheap Vibes, and they did a lot of garage okay. psychedelic rock. Oh. Um, yeah. So that that was his thing for okay. um, for a while, and then he. Um, I believe before that, actually, he just did some various cover bands. Okay. So he kind of. Um, he was playing a lot of uh, rock music, covered okay, rock okay. music, and then, um, but his, uh, the Cheap Vibes were an original group. How about your mom? Do, now, does... So, my, my <laughs> mom is, uh, she, she doesn't play any instruments. Okay. Um, but she definitely has a lot of appreciation for music. Both my parents okay. are, uh, I, I give them a lot of uh, credit for it. it exposing me to different kinds, to different of, music kinds of music and being supportive. Of, it, so. of your, oh, that's, yeah. that's great.